first of all, uh, congratulations to the organizers uh, for this uh, workshop. And of course, uh, participants uh, for coming uh, and make this uh, event possible. So, uh, let me just start with the title, The Mind of the Universe, Evolutionism, Cosmology, and the End of the, the <coughs> Knowledge. Uh, in this talk, um, I will analyze um, and compare some significant social and scientific consequence of two opposite theories. First, the pragmatic assumptions of uh, Dawkins' uh, evolutionism, and second, the cosmological perspective, classical but renewed in the works of uh, Mariano Artigas. Okay, with this objective in mind, I'm going to present first some clues of this uh, well-known uh, perspective. Second, how scientific and social progress may be made compatible. And finally, two sense of the expression, the end of knowledge. Okay, first, evolutionism versus uh, cosmology. Uh, in his book, The Extended Phenotype, Dawkins, again, uh, defends one of the most important statements of evolutionism. Only adaptive processes are relevantly implied in the conservation and propagation of ordinary phenomena. Naturally, we can find spontaneous and impermanent systems, but they are not usually the matter with which uh, scientists infer patterns, relations, law, it's. Besides, Dawkins acknowledged that such permanence could be dynamic and not only static, which means there are stuff uh, that found its identity in the way they move. Uh, all these are uh, classic clues. Uh, living beings are the most known example, but not the one. Cultural phenomena are identified by Dawkins inside this category. Uh, why not? They are capable of growing and reproduction, and many can adapt to their, to their environment through change originating internally. Uh, in any case, all sense questions about reality are questions about permanent phenomena, and refers to a fundamental and simple dynamism, natural selection. Uh, no matter what were the object of our inquiry, a galaxy, a living, be a living being, or a, a belief. On the other hand, Artigas ordered the mind of <coughs> the universe, uh, in the mind of the universe, sorry, the same th categories, but now justified uh, by the presence of a mind. Uh, don't ask me what's the uh, meaning of mind. Uh, now. Uh, 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 in other, uh, 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 um, however, uh, that's the first difference uh, with the uh, Dawkins approach. Uh, the own impermanent phenomena could be impregnate of logic. Um, for example, mm, uh, why does uh, uh, Luis Echarte me uh, <coughs> born in Spain? This is an impermanent event. It's only uh, uh, it's an event that uh, happens uh, uh, a lot of time ago, and it uh, uh, have never happened uh, again. Uh, uh, that's what my fault. Uh, uh, this was a um, providence uh, or only an um, accident, a natural accident. Mm? But the question is, it's possible that this event that Luis Echarte, born in Spain, or 
Jaume Navarro born in Spain uh, could be uh, in a uh, pro, uh, uh, could be with the propose. Uh. Okay. Um, in other words, the intelligence is extended, is extended to the whole reality. Here we find one significant disparity respect respect Tolkien's worldview. Artigas, Artigas take into account much more portion of reality than Dawkins. <coughs> anyway, uh, and despite of that, it is yet possible to accept that in these both frames, information and belief itself are susceptible as other permanent phenomena, phenomena to be rolled either by natural selection or mind, respectively. Um, okay, it's uh, necessary to uh, specify that uh, to infer the scientific and social consequence of such sort of commands, that's my uh, point, um, it doesn't matter if knowledge has an ontological or only an intentional reality. Mm? It, it's <coughs> the same. Um, okay, let's go how far we can go uh, with these uh, uh, arguments uh, and objectives. Scientific and social progress. For Dawkins, the link between human being and science is similar to the rest of relation between <coughs> men and other sort of phenomena. For example, the link between a man and a horse. Uh, there's only an inessential distinction. Horse carries men, but is a man who carries knowledge as a phenotypic trait. However, for Dawkins, and here one of his more famous ideas, ideas of memes, and, um, the supposed benefit of a phenotypic trait are not necessarily addressed to his career. Natural law, uh, uh, by natural law, sorry, not only it may be useful to other entities, but also only to them. <laughs> Apply a psych scheme to our issue knowledge could be, but not necessarily, be profitable for mankind. <coughs> um, what are the consequences of such uh, approach? Uh, my, my first thesis is that evolutionism changed our classic and still assumed concept of science. With such a new idea, uh, Men find itself, uh, their self, with the necessity of being cautious with learning. In other words, it leads to assume, in one hand, a pragmatic attitude, and in the other hand, to admit that acquisition of knowledge must depend of, or if you want, are restrained by social progress. Okay, Artigas turn. Artigas uh, shared with Dawkins the idea that some natural traits can only be understood looking around its environment. That means it's possible that the advantage, and for that reason meaning, of a phenotypic trait could extend their own career. career. However, in the comprehension of such trait, Carrier is not be able to live out. Tried, tried, may transcendent too, but not be independent, independent of uh, their career. From Artigas' worldview, the mind of universe links non-accidental entities, no matter if they are permanent of impermanent or impermanent, in a harmonious whole. Like, like if it will have a directive and benevolent purpose. The well-being in everything and through everything. Currently, to this cosmological frame, searchers are be able to access data, perform analysis, and formulate theories, trusting and hoping for their activity. Trusting in knowledge and hoping for learning. 
That is to say, believing that scientific progress drives indefectively to social progress. The research doesn't need other training, except whatever link it to get as much as true as possible. On the contrary, a pragmatic attitude, look for criteria or guidelines to avoid dangerous truths. However, and here my second thesis, I think that it is not an easy target how to uh, design this kind of guidelines to avoid dangerous truth. Um, before to continue, I need to clarify, uh, clarify a distinction. One thing is to talk about the dangerous use of knowledge. For example, um, use physics to develop uh, nuclear weapons. And another thing, another, um, refers to dangerous knowledge itself. Um, what means? Um, the second, uh, the second, the, the, the dangerous through, um, is dangerous in its own. Its evil effects appears in the acquisition of knowledge. Um, a dangerous through uh, could be, for example, a fiction that human beings needs to believe as real. That's a, the, the, my definition of dangerous through. Okay, now, how prevent scientists to find out such destructive knowledge? There are three significant obstacles uh, to that. First, epistemological. How to face knowledge with knowledge? Science against science. What imply for, and second, what imply for human identity this attitude that go against our natural desire of truth, non natural, uh, uh, non our human nature, but just by, uh, about or against our natural desire. Does pragmatic attitudes drive us to a post-human future? And the point is, will we like such future? or transhuman future, mm, uh, the same. And third, what do the own concepts of dangerous or profit means? If the universe is constrained by a blind natural selection, nature cannot support itself moral rules. It's a classical issue. Uh, not survive, not reproduction have to be considered from this perspective necessarily as universal, universal values. Therefore, autonomy yeah, is need to be the basis of all moral action. It is the lonely found in the universe capable to create aims, conscience, mm -hmm. autonomy as conscience. However, autonomy cannot be found in itself. Yeah. It will imply a blind autonomy. Neither Kantian nor Neo-Kantian arguments are suitable here because from a strict evolutionism it's not possible to create a maxim that it could become a universal law. Uh, that's, uh, consequently, emotions are the only candidate to get that autonomy works. In fact, that is the main point in the discussion between classic and modern pragmatism. Uh, as uh, is a point uh, displayed in a, a very good book uh, published uh, one year ago by uh, Matthäus Oleksi, Oleksi uh, called uh, Reality and Individuality. Uh, okay, we can go back, we can go back now to the initial question. Is it possible to design guidelines using affectivity as a basic criteria? I, in, my, in my opinion, I guess that not it isn't. Or if you prefer, only relativistic or ideological ones. What does it mean? Hi, here are my third thesis. The end of knowledge, in both sense. We see. 
If, uh, as Dawkins claims, natural selection is the main key of all theory about permanent systems, including, including knowledge, then researches need but cannot be prudent, at least in a scientific, objective manner. But trying to design not non-scientific guidelines signify to break the scientific community in multiple and ideological ones. A situation that uh, involve, uh, again, in my opinion, <coughs> the end of science, at least uh, in the concept of science that we share, or that scientific share uh, now. Will it be the end of uh, human being too? Not in an uh, ap apocalyptic uh, uh, sense, uh, the, the extinction of human being, no. Um, now we're talking about uh, um, human nature, um, about uh, what is our uh, post-human future. Okay, uh, here the sense of both sentences are, of course, negative. Evolutionistic, epistemolo ev ev evolutionistic epistemology drive to the empire of subjectivity and taboos, what is good to know and what is not good to know. And finally, I think, to the involution of social progress itself. <coughs> That's the reason because I'm talking about the end of uh, human being in the whole sense. However, the same expression, let me mm, make uh, the word play, but with a positive sense, could be formulated on the classical <coughs> worldview displayed in Artigas' book. Science and society are capable to advance freely and cooperatively because the end of knowledge, the end of science, is the end of human being. Scientists do not require guidelines for avoiding any kind of truth, whatever philosophy or religion scientists might maintain. Only integrity, <laughs> main factor of a common scientific community a one uh, scientific community. <coughs> uh, to finish uh, and summarize, uh, it's okay. Uh, my conclusions, uh, I would like to mention the lucid uh, Artigas words. Uh, the meaning of science is twofold. Uh, meaning, uh, not the purpose, the meaning of science is twofold. Pursuit of through and service to human being. Thank you. So we have time for about one or two questions. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, sorry, if I forget your name. Yeah, just uh, thank you for the, the paper. Um, just like to ask a clarification. At one point you stated that uh, evolution cannot give rise to a maxim with, which is universal. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering whether you could explain what you base that statement upon, uh, what your, your yes. the reasoning behind it is. Yes, um, the argument is, uh, I guess, simple. Um, to make universal laws, uh, you need to be, uh, you need to consider the universe as a whole. Mm -hmm. So, um, for this uh, uh, point of view, you cannot uh, do uh, universal uh, statements. Do you understand? No. <laughs> So what you're saying is that uh, evolution is always a particular fact uh, that takes place at a particular moment due to yeah. very specific circumstances yeah, yeah. and therefore, okay, good, gotcha, thanks. <laughs> That's the, the word I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so are you trying to say that biology cannot make uh, universal statements, so therefore only physics can, or who can? No, 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 no biology. Evolutionistic biology. It's a different, it's a different uh, uh, statement. Uh, evolutionistic biology uh, study uh, their object uh, from a perspective of natural selections as a essential clue. Uh, um, 
uh, against uh, non-evolutionistic biology that only hmm, could say, okay, I'm going to study and link uh, uh, to this uh, two, three, four kind of uh, phenomena hmm, with a try to make uh, hmm, universal uh, statements, universal law. Or uh, Aristotelic, uh, Aristotelic uh, mm, biology uh, could be uh, uh, infer uh, uh, universal law uh, thinking not in a biology but in a metaphysics. That's my uh, I think point. Martin is, hmm, seems to be expecting it. Okay. No, no. This, no. I was. I agree with his with her perplexity so, because I think that all today biology is completely evolutionistic. Yeah. It can't mm. be so any biology bi is grafted mm -hmm. to the evolu evolution. evolutionary theory. Yeah. You can't evolution. think of biology. Yeah, but uh, but I guess in my opinion, yeah, they work with uh, an not uh, uh, evolutionistic frame of uh, uh, science uh, because uh, if you think deeper. Uh, about uh, how can you say uh, and, and what can you not mm, yeah, of law, mm, of universal law. Mm, the question uh, uh, will be the next. Um, universe is ruled by natural selection. That's my point. Okay, so uh, this quote the Sanskrit. Nothing in biology makes, makes sense, sense outside, outside evolution. evolution. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make it right, though. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 professor, yes. Yes, I, it's, I have the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a I natural selection. I, uh, I want to, in a way, support your point uh, by, the follow, by making a distinction that evolutionary theory in biology is a historical claim. And as a historical claim, it deals with contingencies, unique events, et cetera, et cetera, as distinct from claims in, say, molecular biology. Now, molecular biologist might wish to locate his or her understandings of molecular biology in a broader evolutionary framework, and that's what is done, but still the claims of molecular biology are claims to universal truths in a way in which a historical claim cannot be. And is that, so by emphasizing evolutionary theory as a historical claim, you automatically deny a universality to it, which you could claim for so statements in molecular biology. Okay. okay. So that's how I would want to support yeah, yeah, your position. Yeah. <laughs>